everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again for joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus combination. As you know, I love that bergamot, that zing, and the peppermint. It's just so good. So good in the morning. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea or maybe a cup of coffee, or as I always say, maybe something harder. So that's a big mug, isn't it? It's a pretty big mug. I like this mug. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about Canon discontinues various EOS R series cameras, all right, full frame cameras. And what is going on? It seems like the burn rate, guys, on these mirrorless cameras are just accelerating. But we'll get into that in just a second. Before I get into the whole meat and potatoes of this video, I want to say thank you to all the people that wish me a happy birthday yesterday. Um, I really appreciate all of you. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for continuously giving to the channel, either monetarily or in the comment area, putting these amazing, well thought out, well articulated comments down there. That's what sets our channel apart. I want to see this channel at 100,000, 200,000, a million subscribers so we can get this message out to everyone and be able to have these conversations with even more people. So if you're new here and you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please subscribe. We have about 600 videos, a lot of evergreen videos in the queue. There is a lot. And if you are subscribed, click this little bell icon over here. If you do, when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately, supposedly, according to YouTube. It doesn't work all the time, but that's all right. That's all right. We'll get it to work one day. They'll keep working at it. <sighs> algorithm, algorithm. Anyways, let's get right into this Canon stuff. So about two years ago, Canon introduced, two years ago, two years ago, Canon introduced the EOS RA camera. And as of today, they discontinued it. So if you go over to B&H, Adorama, you go to any of the major retailers, camera retailers, you'll see that it says discontinued. Now, that is a quick, quick turnaround of a camera, a quick burn rate, as I was telling you at the beginning of this video. I feel like it's becoming quicker and more ferocious, let's just say. Things don't stick around as long. If they're not working, they get cut. So once again, the EOS RA is discontinued. I'm going to get into another one that might be discontinued very soon also. So what was this RA? Now, if we go over to B&H's site, they have like a little um, description here. I'm going to read it to you so you know what this camera was. It says, developed specifically for those looking to photograph the night sky. The Canon EOS RA is a modified version of the original EOS R that incorporates an optical IR cut filter in front of the sensor for photographing distant nebula and other astronomical phenomena with utter clarity. By updating the EOS R's design with a dedicated filter, the EOS RA provides approximately four times improved transmission and sensitivity to H alpha wavelengths for depicting nebula and other subjects without unwanted infrared contamination for greater color neutrality. So basically what this was, was an EOS R, but modified with that IR or infrared filter in it to be able to capture distant nebula, all right, to capture the night sky for astrophotographers. And a lot of people really enjoyed using this camera. The camera itself was a 30 megapixel camera, 14 bit raw. It had that five axis image stabilization, the IBIS within it, and also would shoot eight frames per second. It would record 4K at 30p, as well as having this interesting, let's say, EVF as well as LCD that would be able to provide a 30x magnification to whatever you're looking at. So you can really dial in the nebula or the star or the planet that you're photographing. And it went for about 2,500 bucks. That price didn't change over time. It was still 2,500 bucks, I believe, when they discontinued it. I think there wasn't a lot of purchasing going on, so they just got rid of it. Now, this was very similar to the astrophotography camera that Nikon put out, the D810A. Now, 
That camera was also discontinued. It came out in 2014 and once again was discontinued. So once again, this camera was only out for two years before it was put to pasture. Now, according to Canon rumors, they state that the Canon EOS R, the original Canon EOS R proper, is also being discontinued. So the Canon EOS R was released exactly three years ago, as of October, basically next month. So once again, this is a very short-lived camera. Three years is not a long time for them to discontinue or stop production of a camera. Now, as we discussed in a couple of videos ago, we talked about mirrorless versus DSLRs. And is it worth to buy a DSLR now or is it worth to jump into mirrorless? And what we were talking about is how the resale value is being affected. If you purchase a mirrorless camera in 2018 and you sell it in 2021, you're losing approximately 12.6%. Now, if you purchase a DSLR back in 2018 and you sold it now in 2021, you're going to lose approximately 2.2%. It is a major difference between the mirrorless and DSLR burn rate. So as we can see, the DSLR are holding their value a lot more than mirrorless is. And that kind of makes sense. That is exactly what we would think when it comes to a new technology. Something new coming out always has a greater or a faster burn rate, Okay, a greater turnover. Now, as manufacturers test these mirrorless full frame waters, let's say, they're going to become quicker and quicker to cut losses as well as increase pricing. And that's what we have seen, right? So if they find that a camera has a strong following, well, they will increase the price and they'll continue production. If something doesn't do well, they'll just nix it and that's it. This holds true for Panasonic as well as Canon and Nikon. Sony has been doing this for quite some time. They're not really nixing the cameras um, as quickly. All right. So, but they're not also producing them as quickly as Canon, for example. That's like at this breakneck speed of putting out full frame mirrorless cameras. So I feel like we're back in the wild, wild west of the digital camera age, right? Where the digital camera manufacturers are basically using our wallets to test and test and retest these devices. And the ones that stick, those are the ones that continue with, and the ones that don't stick, well, they get nixed. And the problem with that is, is resale value. When these things go discontinued, the resale value drops because what happens is the parts for these cameras become harder and harder to find over the next period of years. So if you pick up, for example, a Canon EOS RA and you have a problem with that RA and let's say three years from now, chances of you getting a part to fix it or Canon even fixing it at all is less likely than something that's still in production, right? Or is still in production, but they are now moving to different Mark numbers, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4, so on and so forth. So once again, I feel like we're in that era back again in the 90s, that digital camera age when digital cameras came up and the burn rate was just incredible. They were just banging out cameras like crazy just to see what would stick on the wall. I remember the Canon EOS, I think it was the 10D came out and then the 20D and the 30D and the 40D. Literally within a couple of years, there was four cameras or even quicker than that, a year and a half. It was just breakneck speed. And I feel that's exactly what we're witnessing here with the full frame mirrorless market as we see today. Almost identical, almost identical. So what do we know here, guys? What do we know? Number one, we know that the Canon EOS RA is history. That's the end of it. Will they come out with a new RA, maybe an RA Mark II? It's a possibility, but I don't see it yet, and I haven't seen any rumors for it. So what are they doing? We don't know. Also, what we do know, or what we assume, according to Canon Rumors, that we're seeing that the EOS R itself, proper, the EOS R, the first version, is also going the way of the dinosaur. There's still some out there, but production has ceased. So my question to you is simply this. Is now the right time for you to invest in a full frame mirrorless camera? Or are you going to sit on the sidelines and basically wait for the market to settle out? This is what I wanna hear from you guys. What is the answer? For me, I've been waiting. 
And I've told you guys in the past that I was really interested in a few cameras, but I held off because I know that the Canon EOS R1 is not that far away. And for me, I can continue using all of the 1DX Mark III's over there without a problem, also all the 5D's, and I can get my job done, my professional work, right? So when the R1 comes out, most likely we'll bring in a couple of those, but we will see. Right now, the DSLR is still doing the job. Once again, how is it for you? So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful, very helpful. Please do so, as well as subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed as of yet, please also subscribe and click this little bell icon so when I go live or when a new video comes out, like I've told you, you'll be notified of it immediately, hopefully, hopefully. And also, when we're done talking down here in the comment area, head over to community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com, where you can find us hanging out, tons of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographers, videographers, tech heads, just hanging out and just shooting it, so to speak. All right. There's a lot of us on that creative discord server. It's free. Go check it out. Once again, community.jchristina.com. And if you want to contribute to the channel, you can use this email address here through PayPal, or you can click this link down here that says join. If you click that, you can join, become a member, and I can give you perks for doing so. And finally, YouTube has given us this button down here that says thanks with the little dollar sign. If you click that, you can also provide a dollar or two, whatever you like, to the channel. And supposedly, according to YouTube, the lion's share goes to the creative, like myself, or any other channel that you see out there that you absolutely love, that you want to contribute to. Use that little thanks button, because supposedly, according to YouTube, we are going to get the most of the money, the greater percentage. I don't know if it's true or not, but we're hoping. And finally, head over to the website jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. And for getting to the end of this video, use promo code YT20 at checkout. Once again, YT20 at checkout and you'll get 20% off everything in your shopping cart. Not one thing. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.